Enjoying Life Over the Road, a community that champions adventure, innovation, and well-being. Welcome to Enjoying Life OTR. My name is Cindy Tunstall, and I'm your host. Today, we have a great guest. His name is Tony Brown, and he's a wonderful driver. He's got some great stories to share with us. Um, he drives a reefer, so he's hauling produce. Um, he's from Maine. He travels all over the country doing over the road, loves the lifestyle. He's been trucking since 1993, and he has some great stories to share with us. So welcome to the show, Tony. Hey. Thank you. Okay, so tell us your CV handle, because I know Tony is not how everybody knows you. How, what do they call you out there? <laughs> Rip Raff. Rip Raff. Okay, I love that. <laughs> okay, I said in the intro that you've been driving since 1993. That's a long time trucking, so I know you've got some great stories to share with us. <laughs> so what do you yeah. love about this lifestyle? What, um, what's made you stick with it so long? What's your favorite part about it? Oh, I would have to say just the, the, the freedom of you know, not being in one spot and being inside cooped up uh, in one, like a, in a building, I guess. I like seeing different places. I'm curious, wicked curiosity type of person. Yeah, that's good. So whatever the next, next mountain or the next turn is uh, something I got to see. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I love that. Yeah, it's fun to get out. It's like hard to imagine after you've been driving. I mean, I've only been driving a couple of years, but um, I look forward when I have my break. I look forward to getting back on the truck and getting back on the road. And um, it's hard to imagine going back to doing something else after you get it in your blood, I guess. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions because I know you've got some crazy stories to share. So, um uh, before we get into that, though, tell us what kind of truck you have and um, tell everybody where you've been running freight lately. Uh, lately, I've been running out here in the Midwest from Maine. Uh, a whole lot of frozen, but of course it's wintertime. But um, I like the Midwest. I used to run all the East Coast and do. I used to do uh, potatoes in the Hunts Point Market and, and all around New York City in the old days. And... Uh, I'll tell you, that'll wear a man out right there. <laughs> and um, one of my bosses told me one time in the spring when potatoes run out, he's like, instead of instead of going down the eastern shore, he says, you ought to try out west. He says, you'd probably fall in love with it. And I never did it back then until I, uh, I took a hiatus from over the road and went and hauled up in the great north woods, um, hauled off-road logs. And uh, when I come back out here, this that's when I... Finally, I'm out west, and I do. I love it out there. I, would, I wouldn't want to run down the eastern seaboard anymore. Too much traffic, too many a-holes. Yeah. <laughs> right my it's okay. Okay, so I want to hear some of your crazy stories. So um, tell us a story about when you were, um, you know, one of your crazy adventures while you're, while you're on the road. What's one of your favorite stories? Oh. <laughs> I know you have a lot. <laughs> I guess the stunt I'm known for the most up home would be uh, I was hiding in the trailer from the law and uh, I got dumped down out of the trailer and loaded potatoes and, and continued hiding from the law and uh, that would be the one I'm most famous for. Okay, I got to hear a little bit more about that. You're talking a little vague, so I want to hear some details. <laughs> okay, so you're running from the law. What's that about? <laughs> Well, it had been 20-some-odd hours, and the plant was broke down. The fryers weren't frying, so all the trucks, you know, they, they come down there on appointments. So there's like 30 of us in the parking lot, and um, 23 hours we was there, and me and the boss's son and a buddy of ours decided we'd unhook my truck and go for breakfast. And um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we went down there about 9 o'clock and come out. We came out of the restaurant about 10.30, was walking back to the truck, and uh, the barmaid to the bar, there was an Irish pub out back of the restaurant. She was just unlocking the door to the bar. Boss's sons probably aren't open to serve people right now, are you? And she looked at her clock, and she says, yes, yes, come on in. So we didn't have no place to be. And uh, 3.30, we come out of there in the afternoon, right sideways. Anyways, we, we commenced to going back to the, back to the plant, and uh, I got in the bunk. The, the boss's son, I guess, you know, we figured was a little bit, a little bit more better off to drive than I was. And uh, we come to the stoplight, and it's green. There's a car and a jeep in between the car and us. 
and the car goes through a yellow light. So the boss's son bumps her. No damage. There wasn't any damage, but she was a little old lady, so they both jump out. He tries to convince her everything's all right, and she goes, well, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Better call the cops. So Matt says, uh, well, let's go around the corner here and get out of the traffic. Pulled over on the side as soon as we pulled the right-hand turn, and he starts giving her the gears. The guy on the passenger side, their buddy, he's like, Hollywood, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> he says, I'm we'll get the hell out of here. I'm not getting no OEY today. <laughs> so we hook my truck back up to my trailer, and uh, them guys were a little bit smarter than me. I just went in to where all us truck drivers hung out in, in the receiving office, and the plant was running. They just got the plant running by then. So they went and freshened up, and I didn't. A half an hour later, a Connecticut State Trooper comes in, and he says, I want the two Miller Farm drivers outside right now. That's me and, me and Matt. So we go outside, and he's like, uh, I know that one of you, one of you two has been in an accident because he had a truck and I had a truck. And uh, somebody's been in an accident just down the street here. And we're like both denying it, both playing dumb. Well, so he goes <laughs> down to my truck, which is four trucks down from where we're standing, and disappears around the driver's side. And, you know, and I was like, Jesus, Hollywood, you got to tell him the truth, he's doing he just looked at the ground, so I was thinking to myself, oh, this ain't going to be good. <laughs> so he comes around the corner, the state trooper does, and he says, hey, what's this damage over here on this step up? And uh, Hollywood's like, what damage? So he takes off and goes to talk to the cop. I wasn't going to stick around. I figured he'd tell the cops the way it all happened. <laughs> and I took off. The M3 trucks at the end got up into Buddy's trailer and went all the way to the front, buried myself in the potatoes. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what happened? Tell so, us more. <laughs> I wasn't in my right mind, but... They weren't, so, weren't, uh, th- weren't thinking clearly at this point. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. So, uh, of course, now, I, I passed out. Fun times. <laughs> and, uh, seven or eight hours later, I woke up because the trailer was moving. Oh, no. And uh, oh yeah, so and I, I still didn't dare come out of the truck or out of the trailer at that point. I felt him, you know, they go on the scale and then he backed onto the dumper, unhooked, and then the trailer started going up. And, uh, and you're I drove still in there. Going three different stages. That and you're still in there. <clears throat> oh yeah, yep. No, I'm wide awake though at this point. <laughs> I bet you are. The alcohol, seven eight hours, the alcohol worn off. So I go first stage and I'm I'm thinking to myself, how in the hell am I going to get out of here? And then I went second stage and then by that time, enough potatoes had fallen in front of me and there was just very little in the front holding, holding me up there. Then uh, he went third stage and man, I want to tell you what, when I come down out of there and hit that backboard on the conveyor, I was moving on. Oh my and, word. Uh, yeah, lucky it didn't break my neck. <laughs> I know, that's but, crazy. Um, <laughs> so but, crazy. Uh, I heard the door shut, jumped down on the conveyor, and went down the ladder, and I went into the uh, shower room, locker room for the employees, and uh, they got real nice showers in there, by the way. They got <laughs> seats you can sit in, hose <laughs> with power heads, real nice. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, what you needed. <laughs> I, stripped, I went in one of the shower stalls and stripped off and took a hot shower and sat right down there. I, I might have even passed back out. Who knows? <laughs> But, um, After taking a beating in the potatoes, so, <laughs> a hot mess. <laughs> uh, so I come out of there, probably an hour, hour and a half, into the cafeteria, and I can see the blue lights out front. You know, that's the entrance where we come in and go out. And um, anyway, so I went the other way. I went out towards where all the, you know, all the trucks were parked that were waiting to be dumped. Jumped in the buddy's truck and uh, Gopher, his handle, and had bad heart. And, uh, <laughs> He had a pacemaker, and uh, I didn't even think. I was sitting in his bunk, curtain closed there, and he jumped in to put his truck on the scale so he could dump, move the, the uh, curtain sideways, and grabbed him by the arm and said, go for it. And he's like, oh, <laughs> holy jeez, rip rap. He says, I wish you wouldn't do that. He says, you know I got a pacemaker. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit, so uh-huh. you. sorry, bud. <laughs> and, uh, he commenced to tell me, he's like, you got to put an end to this. Your boss is going to lose his contract down here and everything. This is a bad deal. He says they, they got nine state troopers here, two dogs looking for you. And I was just like, wow, really? <laughs> He's like, and yeah. And you weren't driving, right? I'm when the, the truck got in the accident, you weren't driving, right? 
Right. That exactly. I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. You know, I figured if I disappeared, that that would that would force maybe force Matt Tannen to tell him the truth of what happened. But yeah. It didn't. By me disappearing, it made me look even worse. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's digging in their heels. They're looking for you. Yeah. I really didn't think nine state troopers, two dogs, would be there though. <laughs> I know, right? So, yeah. I told Gopher, I was like, "Go get Hollywood and tell him to come over here and talk to me." So he he got Matt to come over and talk to me, and he already worked a deal out with that the initial state trooper that showed up. And uh, he's like, "Look, you just come out of hiding and put an end to this." And uh, he's not gonna, you know, he's not gonna charge you with OUI. Um, he's just gonna uh, follow like uh, leaving the scene of an accident and and following too close or something. But uh, he he promised he wouldn't even try to charge for OUI. He didn't come out. Yeah. So I did. He took three the three of us that were going to the bar drinking into the plant manager's office and gave us a half an hour uh, bitch out session on you know alcohol and commercial vehicles, which maybe we did need, but yeah, apparently, so apparently you needed. <laughs> yeah, apparently we needed that. We, it didn't hurt any. <laughs> I learned my lesson. I know. I'm I'm pretty sure the other two did. Yeah, I bet you but, did. Um, <laughs> You know, you put you, you put guys 23 hours cooped up in a truck, knowing that they ain't got nowhere to go, and bad, that's when bad things happen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he let the other two go and kept kept me in the office with him, and he wrote me three summonses, falling too close for leaving the scene of the accident, and my medical card had just expired the week before, so he wrote me up for that too. I got fired. Both of us did. Boss's son and me. The boss's son got fired too. Yeah, we all, yeah, both of us did. <laughs> well, um, you probably got off good for all that trouble. Yeah, he, he, could was, have nice been lot worse. he was real nice about it. He, he just said, well, I, I called when I got home, figured I might be going back out. And I, I called and I said, am I going out? And he's like, ah, no, <laughs> maybe we are. I'm, I'm thinking we are part ways for a little while, Tony. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I said, you don't want to hear my side of the story? And he's like, no, not really. He's like, you were you were there, no matter whether you were driving or anybody else was driving, you were still there. And I'm like, yeah, you got a point. <laughs> so, I had it coming to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So everybody teased me for quite a while after that. I was the only, I'm, as far as I know, I'm the only person to go third stage on the dumper. <laughs> That's crazy. It's so funny you say that. I was just watching a video about potatoes being dumped, and I was like, dang, I didn't know they went up so high. Like that, that high oh, yeah. of an angle that angled it. Almost that's straight crazy. up and down sometimes. Yeah, and that's again. crazy. I mean, it's really a miracle you didn't have yeah. in, more injuries. So you, you well, luck, good you thing luck, I come down feet first. You, <laughs> l- you lucked out. <laughs> yeah, I lucked out. You know, he, he he paid my fine, too. He gave me a car to go to court when I went to court, and, get, and he paid the fine. So, But I, I did get four points off my license, which kind of hurt. Yeah. But lesson learned. That's when I was young. That's back in the 90s. Yeah, doing some crazy stuff. Okay, yeah. so you're from Maine, so I guess you traveled in some bad weather. You have a um, bad weather story you want to tell us, something unusual that happened to you while you're on the road? I'm sure you've encountered a well, lot. Well, my bad weather story my bad weather story didn't happen in Maine. My bad weather story happened uh, back in the 90s. Back in the whole East Coast had that uh, bad ice storm. Yeah? Yeah, well, I, I was in Florida coming up, and I run into it in uh, Georgia. No, I run into it, yeah, I run into it in top of Georgia. Let me tell you, the southern states really weren't prepared for that. Oh, right, and, yeah. Oh, I'm telling you what, after every 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 bridge that you go over, there was tire tracks, there was tire tracks going either into the medium or into the ditch. Oh, my gosh. And, Scary, right? Um, yeah, oh, yeah. So I'm coming up, and as long as you use your head, there ain't nothing in front of you. You know, I'm, snow doesn't bother me a bit. None of that weather bothers me. It's the people that bother me, and... Um, yeah, a buddy of mine drove his sister and his mother down to their winter condo, and I picked him up down in uh, Orlando, and he was with me. So he's sitting in the bunk, and uh, he was he was sleeping, and he woke up to this ice storm. It's pretty hairy. I mean, like you say, every bridge, there was a car off in the medium or in the ditch, and we come up on this car, and uh, this guy jams his brakes right on when he seen me coming. So, you know, I'm... Just trying, I'm trying to ease over into the hammer lane to, to get around him, and my buddy's like, "Oh, you're gonna hit him! You're gonna hit him! You're gonna hit him!" Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, "I got it! I got it!" <laughs> man, oh, man, he, he wiped out. 
he, yeah, he wound up wiping, wiping out right in front of us. And I just got lucky that he went and he spun to the ass end of his car, spun to the to the uh, left. Yeah. Or no, it would have spun to the right, which put him spinning out. And I was thinking that my, probably my trailer would get him. And my trailer just missed him. He come around a complete circle, just as my mud flaps. An ICC bumper would have went by his front bumper. Man, I locked out his back bumper. Man. Crazy. Yep. I bet that guy was scared. Of uh, that. I mean, I've been bitched out, and I've been bitched out in all kinds of southern, well, southern to me, um, Connecticut, New York, Jersey. You know, them guys don't see as much snow as we do. Yeah, you're going too fast. It's just drive your truck, buddy. I'll drive mine. <laughs> You're like, I got it. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, I'm from Texas, and when we get bad weather here and people from the north come down, they're like, oh, it's no big deal. I'm like, no, you don't know. People don't know how to drive, and, you know, we're not used to the no, weather. Really the don't. roads aren't being treated. And so it's just, it's, totally, yep. it's totally different when you get bad weather in the south because the drivers aren't used to it, and oh, yeah. the streets aren't prepared in any way, or they don't have any way to clear the roads. And so it's actually no. kind of scary. Hey, in, in South Carolina one time, I saw I saw a pickup with a 275 gallon fuel drum on back that they'd made a, they had a pipe coming out one end of it and then going across with holes all through this cross pipe and uh, liquid calcium and that was on the interstate with four guys on the back watching and make sure it was doing its job and that with that tank strapped down to the back of a pickup four guys on back. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> He's yep. trying to make do. <laughs> I'm going to make yeah. it work. <laughs> I wish I had a cell phone back then got a picture of that. I know, right? <laughs> You'd be famous. <laughs> yep. I've seen cement mixers, cement mixers with plows on the front of them in Massachusetts before. Oh, wow. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I would think Mass would be more prepared like I that. Know, well, they I probably know, right? are now. It's been, it's been years since I've seen that. Yeah. All right, well, tell me some yeah. more stories about when back in the day. <laughs> Oh, I had some fun in Daytona one time. I was laid over down there. My buddy and I was laid over down there, and uh, come to find out his ex-girlfriend and night security guard at Daytona Speedway. And, uh, we hadn't went and had uh, she give us a tour of the Speedway at night. <laughs> Nobody around. Oh, fun. I'll tell you what, those, uh, those turns are really freaking steep. <laughs> yeah. Did you get to ride? Did you take a car out? No, no. It was nighttime. Oh, yeah. No. So you're just walking around? Still fun, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I don't know, probably other people pay to get a tour of the place, but not us. <laughs> <laughs> that connection got hooked up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, tell me something unusual that's happened to you on the road. You've been driving a long time, so I bet you got a lot of stories. What's the most un- unusual trip you've made or something unusual that happened while you were driving? Anything else you want to share? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> me and buddy was going into Florida, out of Georgia. You know, heavy, because that's how you hauled in the old days. It was heavy. We're going to St. Augustine, Florida, which is over just off 95 above Daytona. We're over on 441 coming into uh, Florida out of Georgia that way. So it's a Sunday night, <clears throat> and this is during college bowl games we're going on. Yeah. So we, you know, when you go into Florida, home produce or seed, and you know, you stop at the egg stations. So even on 441, there's an egg station, and it's open 24 hours a day. So we pull into the egg station. Two o'clock on Sunday morning, and my buddy goes, Riff Raff, that looks like a Florida DOT wagon. I'm like, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> so uh, we go in, and the two ag guys are sitting there, and one ag guy is talking to this DOT cop. The other ag guy stands our paperwork, and the DOT guy comes over and looks over his shoulder and sees that we're going to St. Augustine, which, like I say, I mean, that's way out of the way from coming from Maine to going to St. Augustine, Florida. Yeah. So we're just about to walk out, out the door, and uh, the DOT guy goes, hey, fellas, he says, so what are you doing way over here on 441 anyways if you're going to St. Augustine? And I heard them guys talking about the college football games, and I don't know if there was a bowl game in Jacksonville or not, but I, I just shot this out there before my buddy could say anything. I said, I was just trying to get out of the – of 95, there was so much traffic from the bowl games. <laughs> <laughs> the DOT cop goes, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to buy that one. He says, uh, you guys know what you weigh? And we played dumb, you know. It's like, no, we don't know what we weigh. So his scale was below 
where the interstate crosses 441 is yeah. south of that. And we were going to get on the interstate and go back east to go to St. Augustine. So he says, I'll tell you what, boys. He says, uh, if I pass you before you get to the, your exit, then you follow me down to my scale. If you don't see me, have a good trip. So, yeah, we got in them two trucks, and away we went just as fast as you could. I mean, <laughs> as fast as we could go. I mean, I don't know about my buddy, but I know me. I was looking at my mirror more than I was looking forward. <laughs> was, uh, you know, 80,000 gross, and both of us are in like 92, 93. Yeah. So, see the interstate in front of us. I swear to God, it might have been a half mile away, and all of a sudden I see headlights behind us, and I'm like, oh my God, are we going to make it? <laughs> and uh, nope, we didn't make it. He's the only one flying by us. He got on his CB and says, follow me, boys. <laughs> Guess you didn't make it. <laughs> he's, he's real hot shit. He's a real, real nice guy. Probably one of the most level headed DOT guys I've ever bumped into, but you know, he found out why we were out there. He says, ah, I can't blame him if you're trying to make 11, but. And of course, Florida's pay on the spot, so I had to call the broker, get him out of bed at 4 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning. He wasn't very happy. I bet. <laughs> I got to pay up. <laughs> uh, he says to us, if it wasn't for me winning the bet on uh, some bowl game, and you wouldn't have seen me. He says, but whatever college it was, lost to his college. And he says, I knew I wouldn't get my money out of that ag guy. I didn't catch him right there at the ag station because he lives like 60 miles away from where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Damn college football games. <laughs> uh, you live quite a life there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of stories, though. I mean, I was in Hunts Point every week, two times a week, doing droppers. I mean, guys trying to get in your trailer. You don't stop it. Back in the old days, you didn't stop at red lights. There was one morning, there was one morning these hookers, they kept, I mean, I, I can't imagine there was 13, 14 hookers on on the street, but at least that many pounding on my bunk. Finally, I had enough of it, and I won the door open. I'm like, would you guys please just leave me to hell alone? <laughs> <laughs> and, and this girl goes, give me 20 bucks, and I'll make sure nobody, nobody <laughs> pounds on your truck anymore. <laughs> so I did, I gave her $20. <laughs> Let me sleep. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Oh, Lord. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> You're like, that's yep. a deal. <laughs> that's good money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I never did any of that part of the trucking, but... <laughs> so you've seen a lot of stuff, so a lot of regulations that you don't have now. Like, how is it transitioning yeah. into, you know, you had, you know, you were driving before we had e-logs and... Um, before they had um, drug testing and random drug testing. I mean, how was that? You didn't even do drug testing when you started, did you? No. No, my, at least my at least the first three jobs that I can remember, I know I didn't for a fact. Yeah. And, so back uh, in the day, what they would do, would do a, like in when it first started, they would do a pre-drug test, and that would be it, and then yep. you're just good to go? They'd leave you alone after that. Yeah. A whole different lifestyle now with the ELD. It changes everything so much, didn't it? It's like the the drive time is different and very yep. different lifestyle now, isn't it? Yeah, big time, big yeah. time difference. Yeah. I mean, uh, there used to be more, more, more of a brotherhood, way more respect. Even I think even more people in general respected truck drivers because they were on the road so much. And and um, I mean, I can remember when I was a kid. Um, I mean, my mother blew a tire on Route 9 going to Bangor from from Woodland, or Princeton, and um, it was two truck drivers that changed the tire for us, you know? Oh, and nice. That's, that, my, I, can, I can remember my mother and my aunts, they all, that that's, when we'd go to visit my aunts in New Bedford, Massachusetts, Ma would get behind the truck because that's where, you know, she felt safe in the car. Yeah, and um, you don't. I don't hear of anything like that anymore. Nobody even thinks of trucks in that regards that I that I heard. You know, heard anybody say anything about? Yeah, in a long, long while. Yeah, it is. Well, you now you can't even if you wanted to stop because you're on the clock and you've only got certain numbers of hours you can drive. I mean, yep. you can't really. Then I mean, even know. to help help each other. Right. Yeah, and you don't know who to trust anymore. 
Yeah. I think that too, because social media, you know, it shares the story. So it makes us all leery about stopping to help because we hear a story that in the past we wouldn't have heard that story, you know, about somebody, exactly. you know, messing with you when you yeah. stop. We wouldn't, you know, so it creates a greater, I guess, a greater concern about the dangers and things. So you second guess all those decisions to stop and maybe some yeah. wisdom in it and yeah. maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> no, you, you hit it right on the nose, I think. Yeah. It, it, uh, I drove 13 years over the road, and then I took a break. And uh, or I didn't take a break from trucking. I just took, you know, got off the road. Both of my kids were young, and uh, uh, hauled wood, worked off road. Some nights didn't even wouldn't even touch tired road. And I really fell in love with that that trucking, and it was good money. When I came back out, you know, I didn't think I would like the ELD, and I guess I'm getting a little older. So. <laughs> really don't mind that part of it. I think that too. I'm like, I need, I need the break. I'm glad I get, a, get off the road, Sydney. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Enough's enough. <laughs> yeah. Back in the old days, where I come from anyway, getting a truck and I two in the bunk under my mattress and one that I would run. Yeah. And until I got, you know, if I went to Delaware or somewhere at home, you, you couldn't log that. Yeah. So I'd have to have another log book, one of the three, and, um, you know, falsify everything. In 1999, from January, from the end of January to the end of February, I paid $1,450 out of my own pocket in law book fines. Oh, wow. Falsifying, yeah, I got falsifying in the state of Maine, $850. Falsifying in North Carolina, $250 or $350. Bucks. Yeah. I've had to do paper logs for just a short time, you know, because inside I've been driving, it's all BLD, but, um, and I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. man, it's like, I hated it. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know how y'all did that all the time. I mean, whether you're running them straight or just trying to cook your books, it's like either way. I was like, man, this is crazy. I'm like, I don't want to do all that. So I just want to plug and go. I'm like, different, yep. different lifestyle now. <laughs> Any other stories you want to tell before we wrap up? Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> I guess the, my first trip. I'll tell you about my first trip. Coming back out over the road from being in the woods, I broke my back in 2017, so I hadn't, hadn't been driving, and I get a phone call from a guy up in Caribou who wanted me to go get his truck in Burley, Idaho, and I'd never flown on an airplane before in my life. He commenced to tell me, you know, he would fly me out, pay for it. I'm like, I don't like to fly. I don't think I'd like to fly. And then he, you know, he said, well, I'll pay you $1,000. I'm like, well, sure. Why not? $1, never mind. I love to fly. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, plus plus I get twenty five percent of what the backload paid. Yeah, sure, no problem. Expenses paid. Okay, so uh, I flew out. Being the the guy that uh, was driving the truck, we had some bad blood between us in the past couple of years. Before that, now well, I didn't know I was going to be bringing him back at first, and then while I was in flight, I you know got uh, a message saying, oh, can you bring him home? His mother, his mother's dying." I said, yes, what the hell? So I swung the doors closed in Burley, Idaho at 2.30 a.m. Saturday morning. I ain't saying I didn't want to be in the truck with him because we get along good now. That kind of helped us bury the hatchet, spending that much time in the truck, but yeah. I wanted to get home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all total, by the time we took the rent a car back, got back on track, I think it was 31 or 3,211 miles right to the Holton exit. Like I say, 2.30 Saturday morning, I swung the doors close and uh, with a load of french fries going to Eastern Maine, just above where I live. And um, 9.30, or no, it was 9.56, Monday night, I got off the exit. That's probably, that's, that's doing some trucking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that was my first trip back out, and uh, he didn't have ELD when he bought these trucks. They were from a fleet, and uh, they took everything out of them. And he was waiting to get him re uh, hooked up. I would have been doing a paper log. I didn't have a log book. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I figured I was on a recovery mission. Mm, crazy. Well, I enjoyed talking yeah. with you. Thanks for coming on the show. Right, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's great to meet you. I'll have to have you on again. I have a feeling you've got a lot more stories in you. Oh, I do. It looks like I was telling you before. If I had somebody here to say, do you remember, Tony? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to write them all down so you come on next time. <laughs> Yes, I, yes, I'll have to do that. Yeah, I enjoy talking with you. Will you be safe out there and enjoy your journey? Yeah, I will. Happy trails to you, too. 
Hey, don't forget to check out our community at ELOTR.com. It's a social media network just for truckers. So make some notes, share your ideas, leave reviews, and post lots of pictures. We want to hear about the many ways that you are enjoying life over the road. I do need your help with something, seriously. This community is only going to work if others participate. So please tell other people about the website. Um, Another way that you can help us spread the word is to leave a review where you listen to this podcast. Reviews are really important because when people leave reviews, that host will automatically start recommending our show to other people. And we need more drivers to hear about the podcast and the website so our community will be full of great ideas, photos, suggestions all from great drivers just like you. So don't forget, like, subscribe, share our show, and please, if you would, leave us a review. Thanks so much. I sure appreciate you. Be safe out there, and by all means, enjoy the journey. Enjoying Life Over the Road, a community that champions adventure, innovation, and well-being. Welcome to Enjoying Life OTR. My name is Cindy Tunstall, and I'm your host. Today, we have a great guest. His name is Tony Brown, and he's a wonderful driver. He's got some great stories to share with us. Um, He drives a reefer, so he's hauling produce. Um, He's from Maine. He travels all over the 